All right, everyone, let's talk about making small moves in Pro Tools. All right, so today might be a shorty because it's a pretty simple concept that I want to talk about, but it's basically the idea that you can hold command while you're making moves in Pro Tools in a variety of places, and it'll help you make much more specific, much more targeted moves with whatever you're doing. So I'll show you what I mean. So we could start with, this is just a bus send level. Um, you can also do this with volume automation. So you could also imagine that this is volume automation here. But when we go to move things, right, I might click on this and go to move it. And if you look at my decibel amount up at the top, up above my mouse here, it says 3.8, 4.2, 4.4. .4, you'll notice it's jumping by an increment. It kind of depends on how tall your track is, how much it jumps by. So you can always just like, if you want to be more specific with your moves, you can drag your track out and make it taller, right? But if you want to be even more targeted and it's a little faster, honestly, than dragging out the track, what you can do is just hold command and then it'll really easily move by 0.1 increments. So I'm moving my mouse the same amount, but it's only moving by 0.1 at a time. So it allows you to just be more specific. And you'll notice also we've talked about using command to break out of the grid mode. So it's doing that at the same time right now. Um, I can put a card up on the screen to that function if you're curious about how that works. But that's why it's it moved from left to right when I held command down as well. I'm just going to do undo. I feel like I'm getting sick. So if I sound stuffy, I'm really sorry. Um, so you can do this with volume automation. You can do it with any kind of automation lane, really, unless it's one of those binary things where it's either bypassed or not bypassed. You can also do it with, let me hit tab to jump to this clip here. You can also do it with clip gain. So if you click on this little icon for clip gain, if you don't see it, sometimes you're too far zoomed out. Um, and then zooming in can sometimes make it display. So basically, if you click and go to move, it's going to move by like... It's moving by like one decibel at a time, which might be fine, but maybe you want to be more specific about it. Then all you have to do is hold command and then start moving it and it'll move by 0.1. And you'll see my mouse is moving by a good amount compared to what the fader is actually moving by. And that's because I'm holding that command key and it's making it uh, smaller. You know, it's making those moves smaller for the same amount of movement in the mouse. So I'm just going to undo that. Now, similar to our volume automation, we can actually mess with the volume fader. So both here. And here in the mix window, you can mess with actual volume faders. So if I go to move this guy, right now it's at 15.2, negative 15.2. If I go to move it, it's going to jump by like a f like point a few. I don't know exactly what it's moving by. Uh, maybe a point three-ish with each movement of my mouse. But if I hold command, now it can move by point one at a time. I can be much more specific. And I, I love using it with these faders. And that's specifically because I'm going to do command Z to undo. Because what I like to do here is a lot of times I have chunks of tracks leading to different aux tracks. So these purple ones are kind of like my final aux tracks before the master fader. And so what happens here is when I get to the end of the project, a lot of the time I will make these. And that allows me to make these changes to the overall mix as a whole very quickly because I just have a few faders in one spot to mess with instead of having to go through the whole session and find everything that's going to the, the, ma the master fader, the main outputs. And it also allows me to make changes to chunks of instruments. So if it's like, oh, I like the mix but I just let's hear it with just like all the vocals up a tiny bit compared to it I can do that really easily with these so a lot of times I make these and then when I get into either you know doing a rough master or an actual master or preparing it for mastering to send it out to a mastering engineer a lot of times what will happen is everything coming into this master fader might be too hot or too cold. Usually it's too hot, right? Usually it's too loud. And so then what I'll do is I'll want to be very specific. If I don't want to mess with my mix at all, and I like the mix how it is, I'll want to be very specific and just take everything that's going out in these output one, two, and move them by the same amount. And that's when this comes in handy, because let's say this is at 2.7. If I want to bring it to 3.7, it might be kind of hard to hit that. See, I'm having trouble hitting it right now. But if I hold command... I can really easily bring it down to 3.7. And that allows me to get there and know I'm being very precise. And um, it might not be totally necessary, but it makes me feel better, right? So I tend to use it a lot for that kind of thing. And similarly, you can do that over here. If you don't have this little chunk displaying in your edit window, you can go to this drop down. It's just the IO, so input output. And that's because this is your input panel, this is your output panel. So you can make sure that's displaying. And then what you have to do with this volume, right, this corresponds to those faders we were just looking at. But with this volume, you have to click on it first and start moving it around. And then you can hold command and start doing it. 
And the reason why that is, is because if I hold command and then I click, it's going to change what's being displayed there. So I believe it goes to like delay compensation. Yeah. And then like true peak, I think. Yeah. And then it'll go to volume. So if you want to use it with this function, you do have to click first and then hold command. But otherwise, it's the same idea, right? So it's letting me move really easily by 0.1 at a time with these small moves of my mouse instead of like a bunch at once with the, <laughs> with the moves of my mouse. Now, let's see. I also use this with panning a good amount. So with this pan, right, I can click and drag. and It's going to move by like a few each time. But then I can hold command and be very specific. So if I want to get something to exactly 45 degrees out, I can do that. If I want to, you know, bring something in by the same amount, I can do that. It's really... It's great if you're trying to get like a certain type of symmetry with one instrument on the left and the other on the right to the same amount. You do have to consider that sometimes depending on the level of the instrument and the frequency content of the instrument, just putting out the same number panning wise isn't going to make it sound like it's coming from the same exact spot. But, you know, something to keep in mind. I'm going to hold option and click on this to bring it back to the middle. The other thing that I like to do a lot is with these like stereo tracks with panning. Sometimes with certain things, I might have like reverb for a specific instrument and I might bring it into like 90 or 80. And that's just to kind of bring it in a little bit and then let something else live on the outer edges. So a lot of times then I'll want to bring it into the same exact number, right? So if I'm trying to hit 80 here, it might be kind of a pain. Oh, I did it. Nope, it's gone now. It's like harder to hit if I'm not holding command. But then if I hold command, it's really easy to bring it to that exact number. And I can start moving it and then hold command when I get closer. I can just hold command and go for it. But yeah, that's the basic idea. Pretty much anywhere where there's like an automation graph or a fader, like with our sense, for example, you can use this trick, right? So you can click and drag and it'll move by a certain amount. Hold command. It'll be more, more specific. More specific, more precise. I feel like I can't say specific right now because I'm stuffy. Gosh, I can't believe it. I'm, I think I'm actually getting a cold. So that's it. I would love to hear from all of you. If you use this technique, if you find it useful, if you do use it, where do you use it? Especially if it's something that I didn't mention in this list, let me know. I'd love to hear that. I found it to be really useful in certain spots and certain applications. So I'd love to hear from you where you found it useful as well. And other than that, I guess the usual, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate all of that stuff. And I do have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Noise. Lately, I've been focusing on the Discord server as the big reward for that. Um, there are also early release videos I post on the Patreon feed. We've been having a lot of fun on the Discord server. So check that out if you feel so inclined. It helps support this channel. I think, I think for some reason all my numbers are going up in my analytics and my money's been going down on YouTube like significantly. So I need to figure out what's going on with that. Um, I don't make a ton of money off this directly from YouTube anyway, so it's not like a big deal. But um, it is curious. I feel like maybe they're just giving people less money for the same amount of ads. I don't know. But other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. I just had to film this twice because the first time I thought I started the recording for the audio on this other computer and um, I didn't, I, I didn't, I haven't done that in forever, but I'm like stuffy and sad. So <laughs> apparently I did. Yeah, fun. Um, I hope everyone's doing well. I'm on a struggle bus. I'm sick, but um, it'll get better. I guess I'll get better.